Hey guys, Mark again from Soundview here. And today, for today's gear tip, I'm going to be talking about kind of a minimalist, simple drum miking technique. Uh, this started as an exercise for some of our uh, drum experts brought them over here, just to kind of show a very simple way to get a rock solid, dependable uh, drum sound that's applicable for just about every genre and every setup. I know personally for me, when I first started recording drums, it was a very intimidating process. Um, and I know for a lot of guys out there with just this kind of small four channel interface in just a simple room, it can be kind of daunting. There was a lot of discussion had over different techniques and different places to put the mic. And we ultimately settled on this recorder man technique, which we'll go more into here, just because it is a solid, repeatable, simple, almost throw and go setup here to deliver a pretty good representation of the kit. Um, we're using some pretty common mics that you may find um, just about at any studio or every home setup. We have a dynamic mic tucked inside the kit here, um, a simple, uh, another dynamic on the snare, the classic SM57, and then a pair of small diaphragm condensers as our stereo overheads. So initially when setting this up, we did try the space pair configuration in a lot of different ways. Um, we are all big fans of a large stereo drum sound that just sounds massive. And space pair really does lend itself well to that configuration, where you really get the whole dynamic of a drum fill from left and right across the spectrum. But what we ultimately came across was there was a lot of phase misalignment, and it really took up a lot of time and just kind of threw some unpredictable bugs in the fit mixture there. Also that we figured out is space pair, when you're using an even more multi-mic setup, we're talking eight, 16 channels, or especially for the guys live on stage, space pair works well when you have more accent mics to fill in there, and you really don't have to lean on the overheads to cover the bulk of your sound. So there's really only two places these overheads can be. Let's get into how we have this setup. So setting up your overheads is really easy and uses the tools that just about every drummer or every recordist should have. Uh, you'll just need maybe a pair of drumsticks and some string or a handy mic cable here. Um, you wanna start off with your first mic being placed directly over the snare drum. Uh, this is gonna kind of serve as the anchor, the foundation of your drum sound here. Um, it's kind of said that you'll want to stick it about two drumsticks length above, and then using that ratio, you'll position the second mic over the drummer's shoulder, also at about two drumsticks. Uh, we find that lends to a very cramped drummer and a very tight, kind of choked sound. So we expand that on a bit, maybe two and a half, three. The most important thing though, is just keeping that ratio right above the snare and then right over your player's shoulder. From there, you'll want to tighten things up a little bit here by taking your string or your mic cable and positioning it right where the beater of the kick strikes the bass drum. From there, keeping it nice and taut, you will follow the cable to the top of your snare mic here, or your overhead. And then from there, you will go really the only place the second overhead can go, over the player's shoulder, and make sure those two are about equidistant, and then move them accordingly. Tightening up this ratio ensures that both our overheads are in phase with each other, as well as the kick and snare as we begin to raise the spot mic levels up. So let's listen to another example of playing from Paul, and then we're gonna jump into the control room and kind of zoom in a bit and just kind of go more in detail about how this setup just works. So jumping into the control in here, we're gonna zoom in a little bit just to kind of go a little more into the detail, the specifics of how this setup is. Um, everything you've heard so far has just been the raw tracks, completely unprocessed, just to give you a very honest sound of how the mics are interacting with the kit and the room and et cetera. Um, so first thing I wanna point out is Using this the way that the recorder man overheads are set up, it's kind of asymmetrical. So I'm gonna leave the panning relatively tight. I mean, some folks do it at 25 and 25, 45 and 45. I actually have it at 60 and 60 right now. Um, there are no concrete rules for this. You just kind of want to experiment and see how it affects your stereo image. Um, 
The one thing you'll notice if you really pan these out is the center of your kit might become a little bit lopsided. So that's why we tend to focus it in more. Um, the real important thing that I wanna kind of just zoom in briefly on the screen here for is just to actually show you how well this accounts for phase. So zooming in on the waveforms, you kind of see that our overheads, the initial transients, dip down at the exact same time, come up and down. Um, and you really can't ask for a better phase relationship than that. I notice that the snare is maybe a little bit behind, um, but that is something you could easily just move it a few samples or just move the mic a little bit until you get it perfectly fine-tuned. But the fact that this was just a very simple measurement and on our first pass, they were that synced up, um, that is extremely helpful and part of the reason why Recorder Man is kind of one of our go-tos for a four mic setup. And like I mentioned earlier, um, it can be pretty intimidating when you're approaching recording drums for the first time um, and you start hearing things like phase relationships and polarities and worrying about all the mics and making sure they all interact with each other to get you this big sound. Um, but really when you're working with a minimalist setup like this, the most important thing is just really locking in the phase and polarity relationship of your overheads. Uh, those are going to be just the foundation of your drum sound and responsible for giving you just the complete picture, whereas the kick and the snare mic here just kind of serve more as accents and kind of reinforcements. So as long as your overheads are perfectly in phase as they are here when we zoom in, um, you really don't have that much to worry about. Of course, you really are gonna wanna experiment and zoom in and make sure that your kick and snare are as full as possible, but that is why most preamps give you a polarity switch. So if you do what we do here and zoom in and you notice that maybe while your overheads are peaking down on the initial transient and your snare is at a complete 180, just inverse the uh, polarity and that should take care of the problem for you. Or just move the mics until you get the biggest sound and fullest sound. And I guess what I mean by that is on playback, if you're listening and maybe you don't have a monitor, or if you do, it might even be helpful just to cut the monitor off. Um, solo your overheads and then flip them in mono with the snare and then just begin to flip the phase and polarity on that snare. And you'll notice on one setting, the snare will maybe even just disappear and sound very thin and tinny. And then on the other setting, it's gonna sound very large, very punchy, and that's where you want it to be. That's how you know it is close to being in phase as possible. Same thing with the kick. Uh, that was one thing we noticed here when we were setting this up, is that our kick was actually 180 degrees out of phase. So we flipped it on the preamp and it was locked in, ready to go, full, punchy, fast, easy, and repeatable. So thanks for checking out this video, guys. Hopefully this was a good introduction into four mic setup drum recording. Um, we are always more than happy to go more into detail about this setup, space pair, XY, and every other configuration you can think of. So shoot us an email or give us a call at any time. We're always happy to help. Um, if you have any questions about the mics or pre's used in this video and what mic work best for your setup or the kind of music that you're recording, we always can help there too. Uh, we do have a try before you buy where we can send these mics out for you to experiment and we'll talk with you in real time and figure out how it's going to work to best suit your needs. So thanks again, let us know if you have questions and we'll see you soon.